All right, guys, we are back uh, with Behind the Bikini. We are on episode number 52. We are officially into the new year. So what we're going to do now, actually, because this is our new year, is I'm going to change this over to season two. So we're on season nice. two now. Season two, episode 52. So then that way we can um, we can kind of build on this year. And then we'll have season three next year and so on and so forth. See how that works? I like that. <laughs> I like that. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about a couple different things. We're going to talk about what it means to be like a good athlete and be coachable. And then we're also going to talk about um, when it's time to switch coaches. How do you know? And then when you decide to do it, how do you do it? So those are, that's going to be our topic today. Um, but before we get into all of that, like, comment, subscribe, turn on all the buttons and notifications and pop wherever the buttons are. So I was just saying before we logged on here, I feel like it's been forever since we've been on. It's been like a week and a half. <laughs> I'm like, this is weird. Like, usually we're doing like, you know, Thursday and Monday. Now we did a Monday and then a Thursday. So it's a, it's a long stretch. I was like, Longer I like stretch. Of, I like, I feel like a lot of things happened. Oh my goodness. It's been a crazy week. So how are things going for you? Uh, it's been a, it's been a terrible week, but you know. Oh no. Why has it been terrible? Just, just just getting into the prep feels, you know, the last, the five week freak out. Uh Uh-huh. You know, the last, you know, three to five pounds is always very, very hard to get off. So. It's so funny that you said that because I felt that way that like this last couple of days I've been exhausted. I've been absolutely exhausted the last couple of days. That's the first time that I've, that I've really felt that, you know. Exactly. And I was like. Now that you say the five week out freak out, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Because I, I was thinking it was because I just came back from back from Nashville, but I think it's more just getting into that depth of the of the prep where we're at that point now. Yeah, exactly. And I haven't, you know, I'm I'm so thankful, you know, that I yeah. haven't felt this way all prep, you know, and it now is the time to feel this way. And um, yeah, so just literally taking it one day at a time. I feel like all the travel finally caught up to me too. So I've been home yeah. for a week, and I think my body's just finally like, and just kind of, yeah. you know, you get into that that kind of fight or flight when you're going from one place to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. And then finally, when your body gets a chance to fully relax, you almost kind of feel more stress because you're starting to feel all those things you were kind of numbing or, you know, just trying to push off to the side. So, um, my weights went, um, up all week Mm. with no changes with, well, with more cardio and less food. And, you know, it's funny. I was having another client and her weight was doing the same. And I'm like, are you following your plan? Yes. I'm like, well, then, you know, it's something else, you know, and same thing with me. Like I know I'm following my plan. So something else is going on. And, um, the last two days I had something going on hormonally again. I was super bloated. I couldn't Mm. sleep the night before I was having such bad cramps. I couldn't sleep and I Mm. haven't had a bleed in two years. So I like was telling myself, I'm like, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I'm going to be bleeding. Um, it was that bad. Um, I went to my body work person yesterday. I need to ask her the device, but it was something that she put on my stomach and it's probably some sort of like electrical current or something of that nature, but she put on the hormone setting and I had no cramps after I saw her yesterday. Um, And she did some like abdominal and uh, pelvic floor release too. So that was, that was super helpful. Um, And then I dropped this morning. So it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I woke up, well, not woke up. Um, I've been noticing in my morning photos that my tie-ins like look even and everything's fine. Um, and then in my afternoon posing sessions, like after all my cardio's done and training and whatnot, my right tie-in was gone, just mm. gone. I was freaking out, and I started to see this was happening. It was getting worse. Um, so I sent a, my, my body work girl here is Kristen. Um, I sent her all the videos and she was like, okay, take video of your training tomorrow of your lower body training. So I sent her all of my lower body training and she literally had like a plan put together wow. when I saw her yesterday. So my, I did photos again this morning cause she wanted to see and my right tie in is back. So I literally had just like a ball sitting right on the glute hamstring tie in. Like you oh, could wow. f- feel it. Um, so we got all that out, but I was, I was freaking out. So I was like, yeah, is this tissue? Like, is there no tissue here? Is this an injury? Like I had a little bit of like swelling and, um, bruising there, which is usually not a good sign. So I was yeah. literally freaking out, but all is good as of this morning. So. Oh, wow. Isn't that <laughs> yeah. crazy? Like, you know, th- it's funny that you say all those things because when I got back from Nashville, I started having that pain underneath my left like underneath my rib cage again, like I've had in the past. Right. And I'm like, I'm trying not to freak out, but at the same time, like I know I've had that three, four times in the last, you know, six months, you know, and I think, I do think I probably have like a cyst or something there. And it's just, I went through ovulation this weekend at Nashville 
and I had a hard time going to the bathroom. And I, again, I've been making all these notes. I'm like, every time I go through ovulation, this happens every time. Right. So I'm like, I know that the reason why I can't go to the bathroom is because I'm ovulating. I know the reason why I got this pain underneath here is because I'm ovulating. I'm like, as soon as I got home from Nashville, I was able to go to the bathroom, no problem. Like, like a champ, like four times, <laughs> like yeah. I'm good, you know? And then the pain is, is, uh, got a little bit worse yesterday and then it's kind of dissipated today. So I think it's a combination of, I think I do have a cyst there. Um, I think when I do ovulate it, it inflames. And then on top of that, I'm increasing my posing practice and all those yeah. kinds of things too. So that's irritating it even more, you know, and all of those things make a difference. And I'm just like, you know, but you get to that point where I'm like, oh my God, am I dying? I've got this pain under here. Do I, do I have appendicitis? Is my, or am I going to burst? You know, you start all the worst case scenarios, you get on Google and all the worst case scenarios start going through your head and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I'm interested about this little bodywork thing you mentioned she put on your stomach because I'm like, oh, that sounds like that would help me because it's like, if, yeah, I'll if get you, the it's from like, her. yeah, it's like, it's like a dull, it's a dull pain. It's not a sharp shooting pain. It's a dull, like, it, it, Which sometimes is even pain. more annoying. It you is because it just doesn't yeah. go away. Yeah. It's just there. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah. And you know, again, the ovulation thing is annoying because I'm like, I know what this is. And I know that as soon as this goes away, I'll be able to go to the bathroom again, but I can't go to the bathroom right now. I was that's dying. what I think my, that's what I think mine was, was ovulation. Um, yeah. Just because of like the chain, you know, the changes yeah. you see with ovulation, that was definitely happening. But I feel like ovulation is more painful than it like is. this. Yeah. It's it is so intense. And yeah. obviously when we're this lean, like I feel like pain is is more like I'm I have a very high t- pain tolerance I feel, I feel like you do yeah, too I do. um and I'm like why is like a this typical thing that wouldn't cause me like you know right. much discomfort it's so bad when you're that yeah. lean you know it's it is very difficult it's like the and I was so tired the other day so we, you know we have our coaching call on Tuesday right so prior to the coaching call I was doing I was doing my own mobility work and I'm on my you know my yoga wheel and I have my little glute lock thing and I'm on, like rolling around on the floor and I literally fell asleep, like, on top of my little glue block. I, uh, I woke up. I look at my phone. I was like, oh, two minutes to the coaching call. Perfect timing. <laughs> I was like, I fell asleep on the floor on top Maybe of Maybe I'll just lay block. here during the coaching call. For real. I was like, I should just stay here, like, for real. Because, you know, I have that little, I mentioned it's, it's a glute blade is what it's called. It's a little, it's a little triangle. Yeah. And it's great because, like, I bring it with me in my, in my bag, like, in my purse, like, my carry-on. So I had it with me the whole time I was in Nashville, and I was sitting on it and laying on it. You know, I went and saw my girlfriend when I was there uh, for the last day, and she had some back pain. So I had her lay on it. She's like, oh, my God. She's like, I'm going to steal this from you, that kind of thing. So you literally just lay on it let your body just kind of collapse around it. And so that's what I was doing. And I was like, oh, I just felt <laughs> sleep on the floor <laughs> yeah it's funny we were talking about that too because jamie has one and adair likes that too yeah um, and yeah, I, yeah. And adair's here in arizona yes. um getting ready to compete in phoenix on saturday so she's staying at jamie's and she texted me the other night she's like can you bring can you bring your yoga wheel over so like yeah. we were doing like recovery together at jamie's mm-hmm. house and she had that thing there too yep. so I mean, it's, and again, especially when you're this lean and you're flying all the time, like having something like that on the plane, I take my little Thera gun with me because yeah. it hurts to be sitting in that kind of chair for that long, you know? It does. Um, so if you can find those little um, recovery hacks that you can, you know, take and travel with you, that's yeah. so good. So, so good. I even said, I was, like, I was like, I'm not even looking forward to going to North Americans. Like I've only got a few people doing it. So I'm like, I feel like it's... <laughs> I almost feel like it's a waste of like three days, you know? And yeah, I've got, I only have one. Like, yeah, I've only got two people doing the that Masters World, and I'm just like, if I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna stay because I have to be there for Masters World on Sunday. Yeah, and then Monday is Labor Day. Yeah, and then Tuesday I was invited to do Road to the Olympia with JM. If I right. wasn't doing Road to the Olympia, I wouldn't probably go. probably wouldn't go. And Drew, yeah. Drew has to be there anyway, so he could take care of my one athlete. But right. I do have one, an athlete there, whatever. So. If it, it, it does make it worth it that way that I have multiple yeah. things to do there, but yeah. It's, it's, and for me, it's hard too because I'm like, all I'm doing is driving. It's not like I have to fly or anything like that. So I'm like, oh, I might as well go. But I'm, you know, at the same time, like, why am I going for two people? <laughs> to me, it's just, it's like, it's Pittsburgh, right? Like, yeah. it's just not yeah, yeah. convenient. Yeah. Pittsburgh is just a really awful place to be when you're in prep. There's yeah. like no convenient gyms. The yeah. hotel's not that great. Like, it's just... If, if it was more convenient, no problem. Like, I don't care, but it's just. Bizarre. Yeah. For, well, that's what I'm saying. For me, it is convenient because I can drive. Right. For you, it's not because you have to right. fly there, you know? So I'm like, yeah. that's for me. I'm like, well, I might as well just go because it's a three hour drive. You know what it's, I mean? And, yeah. It's a local show for you. 
Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of local shows here. Like that's one gr- really good thing about being in the DC area is we are right in the middle of everything. So it was funny because when I went to Nashville, everybody was asking me if I drove. I was like, no, it's a 13 hour drive from where I live. I did not drive. <laughs> That's right to Nashville. No, that's past I've done that, that six drive. hour mark. Yeah, I've done that drive, but I, I no, I'm not. not you don't have to. Then. Right. Yeah. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. Which actually, so uh, my girl Jennifer and I were going to do that that uh, showdown, the Southern Muscle Southern bleh, Southern Muscle Showdown in Georgia, and we're going to drive back. So we're both going to compete in it, and it's like a eight hour drive. So we're going to split split the drive, and then that way we can, you know, I was like, that I can do. I was like, that yeah. I can do. <laughs> four and four. Like, well, easy. we can stop. We can go to the gym in between and get cardio in and stuff like that, or the drive down, the drive back. So you know, I'm not. I, I was like that. That would be easier. And it's like the middle of nowhere, Georgia. So even if we flew in, it was going to take us a you know time it's to a drive anyway for and stuff like yeah. that. So you know, we might as well just drive it, and then we can right. take our time. And you know, like I said, we can eat our food. We can just go easy, all that kind of stuff. I, and at the end Have of the day, there. yes. And at the end of the day. I, if I can drive somewhere I'm driving, these freaking flights are ridiculous. There's, there's, there's d- delays every single time that I fly every single yeah. time. Yep. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I'm like, I went to, to Nashville and I took the first flight out, which meant that I was up here at my house at three o'clock in the morning to go to the airport. And I get there and the freaking flight gets delayed for two hours because they're having mechanical issues and they got to inspect this and they got to inspect that. I'm like, are you? Like the whole reason why I got the first flight was so that I wouldn't have to deal with this. That's the whole reason that I did this, you know? And it's not, again, it wasn't a huge deal because when I got to Nashville, I was doing a photo shoot when I got there. And um, so it wasn't like I was pressed for time or anything like that, but it was just annoying. I'm like, I got to slept for two more hours. (laughs) Well, and and two, like you plan your food, you know, like you only have so much food on you and you know, and and if you're delayed for two hours, that's a, that's a lot of time for us. So. It's just well, especially and especially with the photo shoot because you don't want to eat a ton of food before you shoot. Like I did have my first meal, which is always my biggest meal of the day, but you don't want to eat like two, three meals before you go pho- do a photo shoot. You're gonna have a belly, and I'm like, I don't want that. <laughs> like I need to have a little bit of fullness, but I don't want to be full, you know. And I'm just like, and, and like I said, I knew that getting up that early was gonna throw my whole clock off as far as going to the bathroom and all that kind of stuff too. And it did. That's what threw me off for the whole weekend. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh. Yeah, but the photos came out really great, so I'm I'm happy with that. Worth it. <laughs> it's so cool because like, so the guy that I shot with, um, his name's Shannon, and I've known him for 15 years now. The very first fitness shoot that I ever did was with him when I lived in Nashville. So like every time that I go back for the Nashville Fit Show, I go and I shoot with him every year that I go back. So it's just really cool to do that year over year. And I look yeah. back at some of these photos, like when he saw me this year, he's like, Sean, I have never seen you this muscular before in my life. <laughs> it's like, I know, isn't it cool? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's like you have a photo shoot each year that you can literally like compare yeah. to from the, from yeah. the following year. That's really yes. cool. And I was like, oh, this is like, it, it, and I literally am more muscular than I ever have, it, have been in my life. And it was just cool to watch that, you know? So I, I highly recommend that competitors, if you're thinking about going to show, get some photos done, whether it's before the show or after or whatever. Um, I, I like using a photo shoot post-show during yeah. the reverse yeah. to like keep people on track, right? So right. like do the, do like book the photo shoot like four weeks post-show, you know, that yeah. way number one, you stick to your reverse and you have that goal in sight. And number two, like you don't necessarily want a photo shoot when you're like shredded. Right. So like four weeks post-show is great because you have your curves back, yes. you're a little fuller. And again, it just helps you like have another goal in mind. Yeah. Because even right now, like I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do a shoot between now and the show because I'm getting to that point where I'm getting super lean and I'm just like, mm-hmm. I'm like, I never cool. do shoots looks, when I'm prepping. I know. I'm like, it looks I'm cool like, now, I'm but like, give me a couple of weeks and it's not going to look cool anymore. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, don't look freaky. Not, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm like, holy crap. I didn't, I didn't realize until I saw those photos when I, when we were going through them at the shoot, I didn't realize how lean I actually am at this point. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> got some, <laughs> got some prep goggles, Sean. What's going on? A little bit. I'm like, you can, I mean, you can see in the, in the video right here. I'm like the freaking chin and, and, and jaw and cheeks. And like, yeah, when I, I was, I was doing this before you got on this morning, I was, I was clenching my jaw because my, my temples pop. Like, see? Yeah. It looks like I have horns. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Adair and I, we haven't seen each other since February, since the, the coaches uh, get together. Yeah, we, were both, yeah, yeah. we were both 
in off season then and we both joked that we're fat um so we both saw each other and like her face was shredded yeah, and died cool. down and so was mine and i'm like oh my god your face she's like oh my god your face it's funny you know because yeah. we do this all the time but when we see each other for the first time in an off season or in season we're like oh you know you just you look so different you know yeah but, everybody was yeah. saying that in nashville to me like what'd you do different i was like i don't know i dieted <laughs> Like, I don't know what it did different. I'm what not deep in off season right now. <laughs> oh, I'm not fat anymore. I don't. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm not drinking alcohol. Yeah. Like, I'm not inflamed. I don't know. <laughs> I literally like I can't. Even I washed my hair they, today. Yeah, Becky, Bernadette, they all, all they all, they were like, "What'd you do differently?" I was like, "I don't know. I'm lean." I was like, "I have makeup on." I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Which is funny because they mostly see us lean. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When we're on, it's, but that's the whole thing. Being on stage and being off stage are two very different things too. Like you don't, I feel like you don't look the same when you're on stage because you're all glammed up like for show day. And oh like no! That. So especially not like me. When you, yeah, when you're like walking I look around, like this all the time. Yeah, yeah, you look like death outside of the state, the actual stage. Exactly. It's like yeah, no. Plus, I just got my 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 Botox redone last week, so I'm like, oh, my forehead's not moving anywhere. It's fantastic. Oh, I need to go. I need to go. I booked I booked it to go see my girl in Florida the first week of October. So hopefully, yeah. well, I was like, I went in and I I just you know just time got away from me, and we're looking at. It, she's like, well, it was the last time you were in here. She's like, you were here in March. I was like, what? March was the last time I got anything done? She's like, yeah, March. She's like, so she finished off my Botox. And she was like, so you want to make your next appointment for five months from now? And started laughing. <laughs> yeah, like, no, not particularly. You've been yeah, a little yeah, busy. Yeah. It's it's like, it sucks, like, getting that stuff done when you're in prep because cardio is through the roof and you, you're not yeah. really seeing or people are going out and, you know, you're metabolizing yeah. it. So yeah. I know it's... It's hard. It almost feels like money down the drain sometimes. Yeah. But we are in front of people all the time, too, with our job and traveling every weekend. So it's like. And yeah. it's a maintenance thing, too, because if you don't do it, then those lines get deep set. Yeah. Right. The last time I went, I didn't I didn't do my 11 lines the last time that I went in. So my 11 lines were getting pretty bad. And she was like, no, we should. I was like, I think I get my most bang for my buck for doing my forehead and my 11 lines right now. I said, because, you know, if we let these go much longer, they're going to actually get set in, you know? I was like, no, we're going to do that. So, because like normally when I go in, I do my forehead and I do my crow's feet. Yeah. But I'm so lean right now that I don't need the crow's feet. <laughs> it's just the, the skin's tight anyway. So I'm just like, I just need, That's to right, I need it. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I, unless I smile huge, you don't see them. And even even then, it's not bad. So I was like, no, we'll do the 11 lines and we'll do the, the forehead. And by the way, I don't know if we mentioned this or not. I can't remember if we talked about this in the last one or not. I know I talked about it with a few people. But did you know that filler lasts longer than they say it does? Yeah, so so I was talking with her about this. And she, she was saying that um, – even she hasn't gotten filler done in like two years. I haven't gotten filler done in a, in over two years. It's been a long time since I've gotten filler done. I got Sculptra, but that doesn't, that's not the same thing. So um, there's new studies coming out now that filler does last way longer than what they say, say it does. And also in some people, it multiplies. So like while it's in your body, it actually duplicates itself. So that's why a lot of people, you start seeing them look like they have like that plastic look to their face because they're going back to get touched up when they don't need to. And if they just leave it alone, like they'll, they'll kind of just stay normal if they just leave it alone. It's crazy, but they're, ta they're talking about how there, there's these new studies coming out that some people, the, fill the filler actually multiplies and then it'll migrate in your face. So it ends up looking like you got these big cheeks and everything's like things like that, like stuff that you didn't actually get injected. And then they go back in to try to even things out. And then you get even more plastic looking and stuff like that, too. So um, I just haven't done it because I didn't feel like I needed it. But I'm looking at it and I'm like, I really I haven't. We've talked about this. I mean, I usually do liquid facelift. I haven't done that in, gosh, three years. I haven't done lip, lip filler in two years. I haven't done anything in a long time. So I'm like, and I don't feel like I really need it either. And I'm just like, yeah. You know, so I'm like, I, I, I really think what it is more than anything, as far as them telling you, you have to get it every like 12, you know, 12 months or whatever. It's marketing. I think it's just spend more money. Probably. Yeah. Probably. I had an injector and this is why I love my girl so much in Florida where like, I just thought more was more. Right. Mm -hmm. and I was going back every like three or four months and getting yeah. my lips done. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm like, doesn't look good and then that's what happened they just kind of started yeah. migrating and it was yeah. like going to like the edge of my lips and I, it wasn't even fullness at that point 
Um, so Nina, my girl is super conservative, um, super, super conservative, but like I, I still metabolize it very fast. Like I can already tell, I just got it done like three months ago, but my top lip needs it before I get back on stage. Um, but I mean, I think everybody is different, but I did not know that it can duplicate itself. That's really cool. But also these things came to market and then we were injecting them so fast. I I think that research is catching up. And obviously I think companies err on the side of caution too, of like, Hey, this lasts only this long, but I love that the research is better for us, not worse. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, the other thing too, yeah. And like you said, as far as the, the being conservative, like the last girl that I went to before this one, um, you know, they have the new toxin, the Daxify, which is like, it's like Botox and and Dysport. And she's like, I won't do Daxify yet. She goes, cause there's just not enough research out there. She's like, I don't want to, I don't want to inject people yet. I want to find out, you know, more about this before I decide to start using it in my own practice. You know what I mean? And there's more, there's like more coming on behind the scenes. One of my really good friends is in, um, uh, healthcare sales for, for injectors and her company is working on one that literally works with electrons to make make sure that like from a metabolism process that it puts a certain, you know, something in there that the metabolism won't bring it or um, eat it away like yeah. as fast. Yeah. Obviously I know nothing about these things. I barely wear makeup. So apologize for my ignorance on this, but they're working on these things behind the scenes of like yeah. making these things better, I guess, mm-hmm. you know? So I, just like you said, there's so, there's so many products out there now. That's why you just have to find someone that you trust because you just can't keep up. It's well, you like said a, you got the, what did you get done underneath your eyes? You mentioned you were getting something done. Yeah. So she's going to do, it's where they take the blood out and then, you know, do the, the spinner or whatever. And then they put, yeah. it, then they put uh-huh. it underneath there. I still haven't done that yet because mm. you have to take, you have to take like a couple weeks off and I'm just from the gym okay. and I'm obviously not in a position to do that. So, yeah. um, but that was for, I've always had super, super dark under eyes. Yeah. Um, my family is a bunch of New Yorkers. We have, you know, like the olive skin, dark eyes, um, deep, deep voice, like total, total New Yorkers, whatever. Yeah. So I have always been so self-conscious of my, of my dark lines. And then when I get lean and it like really hollows out, you can just see it in photos if I'm not wearing um, any makeup. So Nina yeah. was at St. Pete Pro. She did a table out there and I, she saw me and I just started getting lean and she's like, <laughs> kind of really bad. And I'm like, okay, thanks. Like, yeah. What do you want me to do? So well, it's I'm going to try because- that. Yeah, the girl, the girl again that did my Botox, she said the same thing. Whatever it was, it I don't think it was PRP she called it. I can't remember what she said it was, but she said that she's seen some really, really good results with that. Because some people are doing filler on, underneath the eyes. I did do filler underneath my eyes a year and a half ago, so that was I think that was the last place I got filler. Now that I'm thinking about it, it was a year and a half ago underneath my eyes, and um, it made a world of difference. So she said there you can do that, and then there's the I can't remember what she called it PMP or something like that. I can't remember what she called it, but it's what you're talking about. Um, under the eye, she said, if you do it without the filler, it has great results. If you do it with the filler, it has even better results. And it's just a way to maintain and, and again, brighten the under eye and everything too. So I she can was say saying just, too, filler in the cheekbone can help this yeah. area. Well, you got, yes. Cause you have to balance it out. So when they yeah. did my filler, it wasn't a matter of just going in and putting it there. Right. It was a matter of they, that's what they did. They put it here and then like, cause that lifted everything. And then you pay attention to where it's still, you know, whatever they, they know what they're doing, but it's not about putting it down here. It's about putting it all around. Like you said. So, and they watch, it, it was a, it was a two session process for me because they watched how it filled out and how I, and where I needed more and that kind of thing too. And yeah. I'm telling you, it made a huge difference. It, like I said, like when I first got it done, it was like, I looked like I just had 10 hours of sleep. It was fantastic. So, and even now, yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have, I have, all I have on is powder right now, like a basic, like moisturizer, like tinted moisturizer and powder and that's it. And you can yeah. see, I don't have, I don't have dark, dark circles and I'm almost 43 years old. So <laughs> Easy in reverse. I know, right? I'm like, no, that, that was the thing when I was looking at the photos from this weekend. I was like, damn, I look better now than I did 15 years ago when we took these photos. Oh. <laughs> I definitely look better now than 15 years ago. Or I'm like, oh, oh, geez. What did I do? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not, not going to question it. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's just funny to me because, like, the older that I get, you know, we obviously take very good care of ourselves, right? And, like, even though we diet ourselves and all that kind of stuff. We still like, even when we're dieting, we're, we're eating more than 
the normal human usually, even when we're really dieting. So it's like when you look back at, at what we actually do for ourselves, we're actually helping ourselves quite a bit, regardless of the, of the extreme dieting aspect of it. And I'm just like, I look at girls that are my age and I'm like, no, I'm glad I took, I took this route. <laughs> Yeah. Plus the whole no kids club thing that really helps too. Just saying. Yep. Officially official in the yeah. no kids club. Yeah. Oh, how's, how's Drew doing? Is he recovered? He's doing well. He's Good. doing well. Yeah. Today Good. is day seven. So he's allowed to do activities <laughs> in and out of the gym again. So, <laughs> And then of course today he leaves and I don't see him again till next Thursday when I fly to North Americans. He's heading to Clash. So he's like, oh, I just got released and I'm not going <laughs> to play with you. Activities. <laughs> All I can think of is that scene from Step Brothers. We can do so many activities. The activities, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we did we did try it out last night, and it was okay. So we were a little okay. early, but okay, um, that's all right. But, it's okay. but then the day before, he went to the gym with Adair and me, and I told him not to train, and he went and did a couple of sets of tricep extensions, and he braced, and yeah, oh. he was sore, and I was like. He's like, it was just tricep extensions. I'm like, honey, you know this. What engages when you're training, especially in a standing exercise, your pelvic floor? Like, yeah. But I have to tell you guys, like, the experience of this was crazy. Like, he went back there and the nurse let me back. And mm -hmm. when they were prepping him, it was it was awful. Like, the guy was, like, slapping around iodine. Like, can you imagine, like, you know, we do the OBGYN what, like every year before years, right? We're used to stir up whatever. Like Drew's up there, like bearing it all with a male <laughs> nurse, like iodine everywhere. Are you just slapping it the, around? Sl literally slap, like the noise is going to haunt me for months. <laughs> months. Oh no. So then the doctor comes in and he's like, um, he's just like looking at me. And he's like, you're the wife? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, usually I ask you to leave. And I'm like, okay. So I like look mm -hmm. at Drew because, you know, Drew has anxiety. And he, I was I like, know. are you okay? And he's like, okay. Because <laughs> what's he going to say? No. Right. Yeah, no. Stay. Please hold my hand. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. I leave. And it, it was done in 15 minutes. And I guess the doctor was awesome. But ironically, the doctor and his uh, fantasy football friends the night before made a bet that the loser this year has to do a bodybuilding show. Perfect. So when I left, he was like, did your wife bodybuild? And then they, they were just talking the entire time. So about oh, that, wow. which was awesome. So that really helped yeah. Drew. And literally he was done. The anxiety too. I'm sure. It, I'm sure that helped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So. That's so funny. But well, can but you yeah, imagine? Can you, I know. Like, well, you know, like I said, I mean, Drew's got to gotta train him now for the show. Right. That's, that's what Drew said. He's like, well, here's my business <laughs> card when you're... When you're buddy that loses, when you're ready. He needs to do yeah, it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's funny. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Yes, but it's done. <sighs> done and over. No done more and over. Yes. Well, the, the thing is, is, and we've, you know, we've talked about this kind of stuff before. It always amazes me that forever it's been the women that have had to be the ones that are in charge of the birth control. You know, when we can only have one baby, maybe if we're lucky two, if we have twins in a matter of nine months, you know, whereas a man could fertilize somebody every single day if they wanted to, you know, like, yeah. why are they not the ones that have to take care of this? And we are, it mm -hmm. makes zero sense. Yeah. And we wanted to do this when we first got married, like yeah. Drew and I, from the beginning, like this was always a conversation that we had. I was, I was very firm on it. Like I knew always, like I was not going to be a mom. And so that was one of our first conversations. And he, he was like, I don't really want them, but I guess I could if my, you know, future wife wanted to. And then when, right. when, we, were, when we really got serious, it was like, no, we do not want kids. Yeah. So we tried to do this. And they were basically said when we were 25, they were like, you guys need to go for a psych consult. And we started laughing. We're like, oh, we get yeah. it. We yeah. get it, but we don't get it. You know, yeah. like, I guess, I guess relatively when you hear 25, you're young and, you know, and everybody said, you're going to change your mind. You're going to change your mind. Um, and then yeah, the kids when we did the movie blockers. So there's that. that. That too. That too. Yeah. And the, but even still, like we were, when we did this consult, the doctor wanted to talk to me and he was like, are you sure? And I was like, sir, I want to do this 10 years ago. Yeah. Like this, this yeah. is, we are sure we're not changing our mind. Like our wow. lifestyle does not warrant this. So it's just interesting, you know, but any, any woman can walk into any, you know, um, whatever doctor and go get birth control or, you know, yeah. no questions asked. Big pharma's fine yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I just don't want to populate the earth. Like, just let me do this. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like the men can have it reversed. You know, you can have it reversed. For a female, it's not that simple. You it's know, so, like, like for surgical, it's so much more in depth. Like, yeah. They didn't use a scalpel at all. He's got it's a little, little, little line. That's it. That's all he had to do. Like, it's ridiculous. Done. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Go. On. They said, okay, I have to say this. This is, a, he's going to be so embarrassed. It's fine. It's oh, fine. no. So it, there's like, they put a rubber band around the penis, uh-huh. and then the rubber band has a clip that they do on the shirt. So it pulls it up, oh, gets no. it out of the way. I was like, I am so happy I did not stay. Like, oh, oh my god. Those are those are images. Yeah, those are images you will never get out of your head as well. Never. That's never. probably why they have you leave because they're like, we don't want you to, to think of your husband like this because it's right. going to have problems down the road. Exactly. Because he was like looking at me, he's like 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 he was deciding if he was gonna kick me out of the room because he probably saw like I was in like health and fitness and I probably yeah, didn't yeah, want to yeah. see this, yeah. you know, whatever. And he was like, I usually have you leave. And I'm like, okay, I'll leave. I'll go. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Bye. Yes. We'll see yes. you. Yeah. Wow. All right. That was a tangent. Sorry. But that's okay. Hey, it was, I found it very interesting. I'm like, that's, that's interesting to me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, hey, Dan, you want to go? Want, want to go get get sick? <laughs> yes. I got a good doctor for you if you want to come out here. <laughs> no, right? Oh my god. Oh, yeah. oh the things. The things. Anyway, all so, the things. Yeah. So today was my check in day. So we'll see what Jamie has to say with my check ins. But I did drop weight this week again. So. Um, feel pretty good about it. I feel like we're on a really good, really good little trajectory right now. So I was like, I, I get like we talk about prep goggles. You know, I saw Jamie in person for the first time at Nashville, and I'm thinking in my head I, that I still got another. You know, I got more. I got more weight to lose, all that kind of stuff and everything. And she's like, No, you're good. We're. I'm like, Do you want me to do? Because we didn't change anything. Because I, I did my check-ins on Thursday. Saw her on Friday. She's like, we'll change stuff in person if we need to and everything like that. So I see her and she's like, no, we're going to keep, we're just going to keep steady. No changes in macros. No change. I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, what are we changing anything? Because in my head, I'm thinking, you know, we're five, six weeks out. Like we should be changing. Grinding. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. She's like, no, we're good. That's like, the value though of seeing her in person. Yeah. Like, cause I saw her on Tuesday and I'm yeah. thinking in my mind, I have a number in my head that we need to get cut down yeah. to that her and I have talked about. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm again on my weight was increasing. So now I'm even farther from that number. Yeah. Right? And then when I saw her, she's like, no, like we're right there. She's like, if yeah. I wanted to put you on stage this weekend in Phoenix, I could peak you and you'd be fine. And so, yeah. but we're so far off from that number. So now that number is changing. You know what I mean? So it's, that's why it's hard. Like, I, and I get it when people are like, I need a number, I need a number to know. It's like that number is five pounds from here. There's yeah. no way I'm dropping another five pounds at this point. So yeah. the number is going to change and altering. It's probably the same for you with how much muscle you've put on. Like you Absolutely. have this number in your brain that you, do. you know, compete at. It's probably going to be completely different this year. Yeah, I do. I have this number in my head, but then I was looking at video from the Olympia last year where I was two weeks out from, from Hawaii. I was like, man, I look so much better now. And yeah, I'm six you weeks do. out. Yeah, you do. And I'm just like, you already beat that package now. Yeah. I was like, I like, I literally could go on stage now and be better than what I was in, in, in Hawaii. And I'm just like, right. Like now it was your best yeah. year, which is pretty yeah. crazy. That's, it is. that's wild. It yeah. really is. And it's like, so it's, it's hard because it's like, you want in the back of your head, you, like you said, you've got these ideas of where you think you should be. And then when the actuality comes around, it's not at all, not at all. Right. Right. And my, you know, I said to Jamie in my check-in today, I was like, like we talked about on the coach's call, I want to be ready for this show two weeks out and then we can manipulate feed. and feed and all that kind of stuff going into the show. That is the ideal situation. And I, I'm, I'm right on pace to do that, you know? Okay. So I'm just like, all right, I just got to keep, got to keep my head like this, you know? And that's another reason why I don't, I don't want to go to North Americans because I'm like, I want to just stay like this and go. Oh, I get out. it. I get it. That's why I'm not leaving with Drew today. He's like, you need to be home like as long as you can, like just keep staying home, keep working. Cause it's true. Like when we're on the road, it's stressful for us and our bodies yeah. don't respond the same way that we do yeah. when we're at home, especially with you with like, you know, the digestion and going to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Like I experience the same, you know, it's those things matter. And the, the closer we get to stage, you definitely want to minimize that. So yeah. I get it. Well, that kind of will tie into our topic for today. We were talking about, um, you know, being a good athlete and being, a, being coachable and being a good student going through all of this and stuff. So, you know, I, I know that I have some clients that are just like spot on. They tell you to do everything. They do everything that you tell them to do. They're good, 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 all this kind of stuff. 
And then there's those other ones <laughs> that that they think they almost like they think they know better a little bit. So it's like they they feel like we've talked about this before, like maybe they get ahead a little and then they're like, OK, we're well, good. So they start coasting. It's like, well, now you're behind, you know, like like how. So as a coach, how would you manage somebody like that? Like somebody that's that seems to have such everything going for them. They've got the they've got the genetics. They've got the look. They've got the everything going for them they don't have that coaching and that student mentality that they need in order to get to that next level like how do you how do you get them to to like buy into the program and get moving towards that direction just stay like on it how do you get them to do that i i don't really have an answer for that if i'm being honest i i am you know i yeah. think that a lot of the times people rely on the coach to bring that out of them to yeah. bring out this kind of motivation and discipline and it's innate. Like you have to find yes. it within yourself. Um, I cannot want it for you yeah. more than you want it for yourself. That does nothing for us. I think a lot of the times people feel like hiring the coach does the work, not right. putting Agreed. in the attention and detail to the plan. I could tell a lot by how the athlete is going to be by the way they turn in their intake forms. Yeah. I, I, I can tell by the how much detail they give me, how they listen to instructions, how they turn it in, if they're on time, how long it takes them. I could tell a lot by the way that they submit that first intake form. And oh. usually if they're late, like if I send them the intake forms, it takes them a week to get it into me. Mm -hmm. um, or if their answers on the intake form are yes, no, I don't know, don't even answer the questions. I know the way this is going to go. So you can have those conversations of like setting expectations and like what the need is, but ultimately that has to come from being innate. And I do think that the athletes that do the best in this sport have that type A black and white dog personality. Like put me in my crate, lock me in, tell me what to do. I will do it. You know, I make the joke all the time. If Jamie tells me to eat rocks, I say, sure, how much and what kind? Like yeah. that is that is the, the athlete that's going to succeed in this sport. And sometimes it takes time. Like people are, it's a very extreme sport. And they don't know if they were going to like it. So mm -hmm. I will pull back on my coaching for someone <laughs> like that. So they can kind of get the experience and make sure that this is something that they want to do and then go in full, you know, swing with them. But it's hard. It's not necessarily something that I can teach and provide to a client that does not innately want it for itself. It's very, it's very black and white at the end of the day. You hire a coach, they give you a plan, and you're supposed to follow the plan. Yep. If, you, if you pick and choose only portions of the plan that you want to follow or just don't follow it at all or don't check in, how are we as a coach then supposed to help you? That's right. Yeah. And I guess the rebuttal too is like if somebody's struggling with checking in or not following the plan, it's my job as a coach to check in and be like, is there something in this plan that's not working for you that I can change to make it more feasible for you? And if that's the case, that's something tangible that I can fix. Yep. But I'll say most of the time, it's just people that are just like you said, they think that they're farther ahead than they are. So they're not pushing as hard or yes. they're choosing p p p uh, pieces of the plan to follow. And it's, it's just very, very difficult. You have to be able to go all in in this sport. It's an extreme sport, which means that it takes an extreme amount of focus and discipline. Yeah. And I think also it goes back to what we were just talking about too, having a fixation on like a number or a certain data point or something like that. They feel like if they hit that particular data point, they're good. You know, yeah. like, no, that's, that's not how this works. You it's know, a great point. It's, you know, just because you hit a low weight doesn't mean you're ready to get on stage, you know, things yeah. like that, you know, there's, there's, that's where having this preconceived notion of this is what's supposed to happen then. That's a problem in this sport because it is, it's, it's, it's adjustable as we go. It changes as we go. You may not look the same at one weight one year versus what you looked at, like at that weight the next year, you know, that's a great, great point, especially when you're just getting started, right? Because you, you're always referring back to the previous prep, but your first two or three years in the sport, those are going to be your most difficult preps. And they're yeah. not going to be the same because you're continuously putting on muscle at that point in every prep, you're going to be a little bit leaner than when you started. Also, are you using the same coach at this point? You know, a lot of people are comparing notes to what their old coach did compared to their new coach. Yes. It's not going to be the same, nor should it be, right? You left that old coach for a reason. And I, I agree with you, Sean. I think people get so asphyxiated on the last prep or the last number, what that coach did. And 
you have to, especially in those first years, be open-minded to things changing. And the prep should get easier as yeah. you go. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't have to be as hard. And like you said, too, you just touched on a point there as well, like everybody being on the same page, too. You know, a good example is we have a lot of times where we'll be doing the coaching and then they have like a, a trainer or something like that they work with back home. Well, if that trainer is not on board with your coaching, then you're, you're fighting against each other. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure that everybody's on the same page with that, because as we've seen just this last year with how all of the fit body training has changed, it's hugely different, you know, building for a CrossFit competition versus a bodybuilding bikini competition. They're two different disciplines. They're two different looks. They're two different goals or two, two different aesthetics, all that kind of stuff. And when you've got somebody that doesn't know what they're doing in the gym as a trainer, training a bikini athlete, that's a problem. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to sync up. You're not going to create the right lines and the right looks and things like that. So you got to make sure that whoever is on your side and on your team, everybody's on, on the same page. Great point. We just had a, um, a situation that happened this week with someone's athlete and on Fit Body Fusion, all of us coaches take care of everything. We take mm -hmm. care of the workouts. We take care of the nutrition. We take care of the supplement guidance, et cetera. And if your coach is giving you those de details, that means we want control over them. Now, right. don't get me wrong. If you want to go hire a trainer to help you with intensity and learning how much mm -hmm. weight to put, like, that's great. But we need to have a conversation about it to make yes. sure that we find 100%. you a trainer that's on this meet page and what my expectations are. Or let's say for whatever reason, you don't care for your, your current programming right now. That also needs to be a conversation with your coach because maybe then mm -hmm. I can make a change to your programming or if you have a particular trainer in mind that you want to go see, great. Let me and the trainer get on a call together so I could talk yes. about what I need as the coach and what their interpretation is and their experience of what they see in person. That way everybody gets on the same page. There was a situation this past week where an athlete just completely went rogue and hired some trainer and then they handed over our workouts. And of course, what's the trainer going to say? Those workouts are shit, <laughs> you know? And then the athlete is just confused, right. which they should be, you know, like you're, you, there's yeah. too many cooks in the kitchen at that point right. where to me, the very first call should have been to her coach saying, Hey, I'm struggling with this. I don't know why, why this is. I need this, you know, and have that line of communication. And that's also about being coachable is communication. We don't know what Correct. to fix if we don't know that there's an issue or Absolutely. if you're not feeling something or if you're having pain somewhere, we need to know those things. That way we that's can right. fix them. That's right. And, and, and the communication thing is big. Like I'm big on that. You know, for me coming up in this industry, I didn't do the coaching and, and the training and stuff like that. I did the posing. So even on that regard, it's, it's important for me to be able to communicate with a person's coach to let them know what's going on with the client or vice versa. You know, they're having issues. Like if I see something in their posing, I can tell that they're having issues with that in their training, right? I can tell when they've got imbalances going on. I can tell when they're not, when they're not training correctly. I see it all the time with posing all the time. It's crazy how often I'll be like, you're trying to grow your shoulders, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. I was like, yeah, because your traps are huge. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. He's you're like, you're not growing your shoulders. <laughs> your right. traps are great. <laughs> I'm like, you're pushing heavier weight in the gym, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's going into your traps, not your shoulders. You know, things like that. You know, we see those things. We can we can tell. Like I and I see my opposing clients in the gym sometimes. I'm like, you're not training your glutes right now, you're training your lower back. <laughs> Like Why is your waist getting your thick? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. you're pushing heavier weight, but it's not going where you wanted to go, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So like that, again, that communication can be there. And I, as a posing coach, I could help you as a trainer and as a coach and be like, listen, I see this going on with your client. Cause a lot of times as a coach, you don't have your client in person. I do. I have you in person as a, as a posing coach. I see your mobility. I see what's going on. And it always amazes me too. Drew says this all the time. He can't believe how many, um, girls that help program the stuff for, and then they won't ever send in a video or a form check or anything like that. It's like, let me see what you're doing so that we can correct it if we need to. Right. Yeah, you spend the money, difference. you fly out here, you do a two day yeah. assessment. Drew takes the time to write you a unique program. Yep. Obviously in two days, you're not going to get everything done. Like yeah. why would you not follow up and send the training footage? Because yeah. I can guarantee you like, Listen, I pride myself on my training. I've done a lot of work, but if Drew's not standing over my shoulder, every rep is not perfect and every rep is not executed to full intensity. 
unless right. he's standing over my shoulder, you know? Yeah. So like, why would you not take yep. advantage of that? And and th that's the thing. I think people get, they don't want the feedback because they don't want it to be harder or, right. you know, they don't want to get frustrated. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. But that's about Absolutely. being coachable. Like if you right. want to be the best, you have to learn in this sport to take constructive feedback. You're going to hear more times than not that something needs to be fixed. You need to yep. work harder. You need to do more. And it's not a personal attack at all. No. But our job as coaches is to push you. You and know, like you better. if I tell you in every check-in, I'm proud of you and you look great. You're never, you, when I actually tell you that and like I say it and I mean it, like it doesn't hold as much value. If I tell you like three check-ins in a row, hey, you need to twist your stomach and your front post. Hey, you need to twist your stomach and your front post. Hey, I need to twist your stomach. And you're still not fixing twisting your stomach and your front post at that point. It's just you not caring. Yep. You're not taking the time to, to really, truly fix it. And most of us are watching this podcast right now because we love the sport and we're committed, but how mm -hmm. much more committed could you be? And you mm -hmm. really need to ask yourself that. Most of us that are watching this want to go pro. Are yeah. you acting like a professional? Are you truly giving 110% to that program? Are you truly working through everything with your coach? If my toenail hurts, I tell Jamie, <laughs> just yep. so that she knows, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the communication has to be there. Yeah. And it's not necessarily that we're going to, we're going to change anything, but just telling us, you know, I had one of my clients wrote in this morning. She's like, I, you know, I've had terrible night sweats the last two nights. I didn't get a chance to respond to her. She wrote in another, like an hour later. Oh, I just started my period. So there, that's the reason why. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, well, we know why you had night sweats. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. You know, but like if not, you'd have been like, okay, thank you. Let's keep an yeah. eye Let's on figure this. Out why we and, got hormonal problems. And you make a little and, note on your spreadsheet and, you know, but right. then we, we're, we're collecting data. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, and, you know, and again, a, a good um, example, I have a new client and we were kind of reviewing what she needs to do in order to go to the next level. And I'm looking at her stage photos and I'm like, she looks like a different athlete from the front pose to the back pose, meaning her front pose looks great as far as how her structure is put together. Her back pose looks like she doesn't train. And I'm like, so as I'm talking to her, she's telling me how she does her own training program. Like her coach doesn't. And I'm like, Oh, well, that's why I'm like, you've got mirror muscles. You know, you got, you got the mirror muscles that you can see. see. Train. They look great. The ones that you can't see, those are the ones that we're struggling with. So I need to work on that. Yeah. And, and you touched on this point earlier. Like I have a client that I'm working with right now and she's got all the potential, all the potential mm -hmm. in the world. And I wanted to do a 20 week long prep and um, her feedback at her last show is that she was too lean. So, and this was with a different coach. And so mm -hmm. she didn't want to get aggressive out the gate because she was yeah. afraid of getting lean too fast. And I was like, well, if you get lean too fast, it's not necessarily a bad thing. We can feed, we can refeed, whatever. Yeah. Long story short, the first six to eight weeks of the prep, we didn't drop any weight. And I think that was her own self sabotage of like, I don't need to, I don't, I don't know where it came from. I don't want to speak for her, but you know, now, you know, I got on a call with her. I'm like, now we're behind. You know, yeah. so I understand you had the fear of getting too lean, but now I don't know if we're even going to be lean for the shows that you want to shoot for. Yeah. So that's where it's just you, you know, like you hire us to be your eye and to guide you. And if you truly love and trust the coach that you're working with, you have to trust that we want what's best for you. I don't want you to be too lean and stringy on stage. I don't want you feeling like you're doing two hours of cardio and no food when you're right. lean enough for the show. Like that is never going to be my intention. Um, and, and, and it's really hard when you leave one coach to not compare your next coach to them. But that's when you're making that decision when you're leaving to find all the things, write down all the things that you do not like about the current coach and write down questions of the interview questions that you want to ask the next coach so that you can feel confident and comfortable moving forward. And then you have to do your best as an athlete to trust fast because yes. it's not fair for you to compare the new coach to the old one. It's right. not fair. You have to give them the benefit of the doubt and fully surrender to them in that plan, knowing that you chose them because you trust That's right. them. Yeah. Once you've made the decision to switch, you need to, you need to stick with it. You need to go with it hundred percent. And that kind of goes into our next portion of this topic. You know, um, a lot of times I think we know before we make the decision when it's time to make the decision, you know, like you just said, I think a lot of people will do that. They'll sit down and they'll make those, those lists and say, okay, these are the pluses. These are the minuses. 
And I, I think a lot of times when it comes down to switching coaches, it's not necessarily about that coach being bad either. I think sometimes it's just, you know, we've, we've outgrown each other, you know, that kind of thing. We're moving on to the next, the next phase. Boundaries you know, get crossed. Yeah. Get too friendly with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, you know, things I always use the, the, I always go back to, you know, college football uh, references and things. You would never expect a high school football coach to coach you when you get to college. You'd never expect that college coach to coach you when you get to the NFL. You just wouldn't expect them to transition up with you. You're growing as an athlete, as a coach, they have their specialty. They're good at what they do, where they do it, and when they do it. So you you as an athlete have to take that into consideration as well. You know, there's a lot of people that are great coaches on the local level. You know, they're going to get you to the stage. You're going to have a great first prep. You know, you're going to have a great time on that that first level. If you want to go to national level, they may not know what they're doing to get you to national level. Great point. Great point. They may not know, not, may not know yep. how to get you there. They may not know yep. how to get you to the pro level. A lot of times, just being a genetic freak can get you to the pro league. <laughs> you know, like just having good genetics and a good work ethic can get you to the pro league. Once you get there, though, you're up against everybody else that has all of that already. Right. So what's going to give you that edge? And that's where right. a good coach is going to come in and give you that edge. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And it's not necessarily that they're even, you know, a better coach than that first coach either. It's just that they've taken the time to familiarize themselves with what they need to do in order to make you a better, better athlete on that pro, that pro level. Like I say all the time, like, why are you going to hire a coach that doesn't go to pro shows? They don't ever see pro shows. Why do you think they can get you ready for one? Especially if you're a pro in the pro league. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to find somebody with that eye. You know, bikinis really about an eye. It's, it's really is. And it's, it's hard as a coach, if you're not going to shows to see that eye. I mean, Sean, you yeah. talk about this all the time. Like we cannot judge shows based off photos and videos. If Sean's at a show, I'm texting her. Like, is this what you're seeing? Yeah. Oh, I, you know, and absolutely. most of the time the girls look harder and bigger in the photos and videos than they actually do on stage. So if you're a coach and you're fully relying on photos and videos to train your eye, I'm sorry, but your eye is not going to be trained correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but just like you said, these coaches, these small coaches, you know, local coaches, they're good for first preps as long yeah. as they're not dangerous or anything like that. But it does allow you to see maybe a little bit of a cheaper, you know, position of like what the sport could look like. But mm -hmm. when you decide that you want to move forward, you might need something that's a little bit more, in, you know, intense and geared mm -hmm. to bikini and, you know, somebody that really just understands the sport. Yeah. It's, a, it's always amazing to me. That's not necessarily the coach's fault. You know, there's, I have this one example in my head that I'm thinking about from a local coach standpoint here, and he's been around forever and he has the same crop of girls and they just, they do, they clean up at the local shows the and they go to shows. national shows and they are last call out every time they go to nationals, every single yep. time. Yep. And they've been with this coach for 10 years. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why They're do you think this chasing. is going to change? Yeah. Why do you think this is going to change? I noticed one of the girls finally just switched to another coach. She's again, she's battling, like she goes up the national level and she gets her ass handed to her every time she goes to national level. And I Sometimes just Sometimes when one jumps ship, they'll, the rest of them will jump. Yeah, I just noticed she, she jumped this year and I was like, finally, <laughs> it's been fucking 10 years. Like, what are you going to change? You know, yeah. like. Like you but have some people, that's their goal. You yeah, know, we talk. I, there's this girl in Florida. Yeah. And she's never steps on show at the national stage. If she wins all the overalls in yeah. the local level, and maybe that's what fulfills her. That would not be enough for me, but for her, maybe that's what you know fulfills her. And cool, yeah. I guess to each their own. I'm sure it pisses off some of the other Florida athletes. Oh, they're like, well, well right. I want to win an overall, but right. you know, it's it really just goes back to the athlete what their what their goal is. Mm -hmm. You know, every time that I have a conversation with a client, most of the time I'm asking the question back to them. You're asking me a question about you know, what show we should do and what national show. My first question back is always, what's your goal? What's your expectation? Yeah, what do you want to see out of yourself? And then if, if you don't care, cool, we could go do this show, even though you're not going to be ready. Or if you want a pro card, okay, we got to shut it down. I had to shut two girls down this year that had every intention of going to nationals. And I said, what's the goal? Both of them said a pro card. I said, it's not going to happen this year. So what do you yeah. want to do? Okay, let's yeah. shut it down. You know, yep. so it's hard, but you know, uh, I try to be very, very honest and communicative because I set the expectation you know, if I tell someone, hey, like, I don't think it's happening this year and they choose to go anyway and they get upset with the placing, I did what I, what I, that's right, you know, what I could, you know, mm -hmm. I never promise a pro card and I'm very, very communicative and making them realistic if I truly do not think it's going to happen. Yep. Um, but there's some coaches that will also, my first coach did this and I don't think there was any ill behind it. I think he just truly believed in me, but 
he thought I was turning pro that year and we just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And yeah. he would hype me up and I would go into the show thinking I'm turning pro and we're going to win the, o and I was not even close, you yeah. know, and that hurts, yeah, you know, absolutely. that really hurts and it makes you yeah. confused too. Well, and, and again, that goes back to, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You know, he had good yeah. intentions for you. Absolutely. It just didn't work that way. But you it know? fucked me as an athlete yeah. mentally because I'm trusting this person. This person thinks I'm turning pro that weekend and then you leave empty handed, you know? Uh -huh. So it's it's setting setting those boundaries and realistic expectations. Well, yeah, exactly. The realistic, you know, I talked about this with my, my girl that did universe and did masters. I mean, she wanted to push to North Americans and I told her, no, I said, we can do it if that's what you really want to do. I said, but this is not a good move for you. Like you're already, your body's already fighting you. You're not going to do any better. You'll probably still put this place top five. I said, you'll probably still get in the top five. I'm like, but you're not going to win a pro card. I'm like, you want a pro card, right? Like, that's what we want. We know what we got to do in order to get you to that win. And it's not get back on stage right now. We need to build you, you know, we yeah. need to build you. And she's in off season now. She went to off season and she's not, she's, and she's doing great. She feels great. She's, you know, thinks it's fantastic, all this kind of stuff. So that's, we did the right thing. Like, her, again, her body was fighting her. There was no sense in pushing. Um, and at the end, and like you said, at the end of the day, she's going to make that decision for herself, but I'm going to tell her the truth. I'm going to tell her like, listen, this is what you should be doing. I'm going to support you, whatever you decide to do, but <laughs> just right. understand what you're doing. You know, sometimes and, and, uh, being coachable means you're going to hear things that you don't necessarily yeah. want in the meantime, yeah. but that coach is trying to coach you into what you have told them your goals are and what's best for you. When yep. I hired Jamie, I had Universe on the book two weeks out from me hiring her. She did not want me to do the show. I said, can we at least do this show and then I will do whatever you want me to do. She goes, we will yeah. do this show and then I'm shutting you down. Yeah. She shut me down for 16 months. I was not yeah. expecting that. I thought she was going to shut me down for like four, four, six months. And she was like, no, like I want to shut down and make improvements. It's not what I wanted at the time. That mm -hmm. long, that off season was awful for me in so many ways because I just wanted to be up on stage. But now look, that yeah. off season is what changed the trajectory of this, this sport and this career for me. So if I didn't listen to her and if I wasn't coachable, I probably, probably would still be competing at the national or uh, yeah, the national level and not be pro and not be an Olympian. That's know? right. That's right. So now let's say we've made the decision, you know, I'm going to change coaches and things like that. Let's give a few tips on how to go about that. I'd just like you to know, take I a moment to welcome our new channel partners, Prozis. If you are unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now, click on the link, go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal, been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique? Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're gonna find, you're gonna find really high quality, pure supplementation. And one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues. So being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues, oh, worth its weight in gold. Go check them out. Click on the link in my description box below. Use the code CUTIES10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises. They're always putting out some amazing promotions. Let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel. Now, go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out Prozis.com. To go about that. You know, as an athlete, as a coach, what would you want somebody to, as, let's say you're, you've got an athlete that wants to switch from you. What would you want them to do? What would you want well, them I, to say? Yeah. I want feedback. And I, and I know that this is a personal what I would mm -hmm. want. Um, mm -hmm. I think some coaches might not take that the right way and, you know, they might yeah. feel attacked. But I want I, I want feedback. And I think the best thing always is the compliment sandwich. Like, hey, thank you for X. Um, I am choosing to leave because of this. You yep. know, I didn't like this or I would have appreciated this or maybe I just want to change, whatever. And then – end with, you know, the thank you again, or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I love that. Like I'm, I thrive on feedback. You know, I tell people all the time, and we talk about this too. Like I cannot change unless I know, you know, what's wrong. And, and that means in check-ins too. Like sometimes people are checking in with me and they're like, I want you to push me more or you're yeah. pushing me too hard. And then I can kind of gauge with them and, you know, adapt. 
Um, so I think always a compliment sandwich, always say thank you, you know, mm -hmm. what, whatever the experience is. And remember that this sport is small. Mm -hmm. You will probably run into them again. And nothing is worse than the girls that run into their old coaches backstage and they don't look at them or, you know, they feel like they can't say anything to them. Like that stinks. Like you want to leave on good terms and create a good relationship just because the coaching relationship has fizzed out and it doesn't work out. That doesn't mean that you guys can't be friendly and, and be good right. friends, like be nice. Um, with my first coach, when I broke up with them, it was so difficult because, I mean, we were best friends. He was at my wedding. Um, you know, we lived together through college. Like, it was difficult. And I knew that this was going to, to break our friendship. And it, ended up, it, it did. Um, I wrote a letter. So, you know, I thanked him for everything. And I explained exactly what I was doing. Not that, we, that there was, you know, no, no confusion. I told him where I was going, that I interviewed people, et cetera. And ultimately at the end of the day, it ruined our friendship. But again, like I can't, I cannot affect the way that somebody perceives or reacts. Right. I can only, you know, control what I do. I want to do mm -hmm. whatever I can to leave that relationship knowing I did everything possible. And I think that's why people stay in coaching relationships for as long as, as they do, because they want to walk away knowing that they did everything and it was the right decision. And I totally respect that because I did yep. the same thing. Um, so that's what I would say, you know, just try to make it cool, calm, collected, and it doesn't have to be long winded. It could be no. very, very simple and to the point. You don't have to over explain yourself. You truly do not owe them anything. At the nope. end of the day, this is a business relationship. But in order to keep good graces, that that would be what I think yeah. is the best on a receiving end and, and the way that I did it on a giving end. Yep. I 100% agree with you. I will give a story about how it was handled very wrong <laughs> for me. <laughs> so back in the day, I mean, things were different, you know, too, when I was coming up in the sport, you know, we didn't have as much interaction, like people didn't go to the shows as much as they do. We don't see people as much as they do. But the uh, one of my one of my first coaches that I had, he was my coach for a long time. He was my coach for five years. But with that said, it wasn't it wasn't a very hands on relationship. Meaning, the first time I met him in person, he didn't recognize me. That kind of thing. So like it was I've very much you know it was online. Um, he really gave me my diet, my training. I did I did my cardio and stuff like that by myself. I'm sorry, I take that back. I did my training myself. He did my cardio, my diet. So really, at the end of the day, like I kind of trained myself and I won my pro card, but he was my coach when I won my pro card, all that kind of stuff. So once I got to the pro league, um, he essentially ghosted me in my pro debut, kind of just didn't, didn't ask for anything, didn't give me nothing. You know, I just, I waited to see if he was going to ask for anything. He didn't. So, you know, that kind of made up my mind that, you know, I need to make a change. So I hired a different coach. And this particular coach actually had been underneath that coach, like as a, as a client in the past. And I was like, how should I handle leaving and, um, and coming to you? And she was like, oh, don't even say anything. She said, he won't even notice that you're gone. And I was like, R really? <laughs> she was like, yeah. She's like, just she's like, don't even worry about it. It's like, he won't even notice. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to trust you. You know, you're my new coach. I'm going to trust you. It was the wrong decision. So, uh, you know, he noticed, he noticed, <laughs> <laughs> he noticed basically. And, um, and it wasn't like, it wasn't a big deal because again, he wasn't going to shows or anything like that, but if it was like modern day age and stuff like that, like it would have been very weird. It would have been very awkward. And well, it just I, it hurts uh, you too, like emotionally. Yeah. yeah. And I did, I ended up reaching out and I said, sorry. I said, you know, I, I did switch over to so-and-so she told me, I said, I was like, she told me to just that it wasn't a big deal that I could just switch. <laughs> Throw in the I new coach like, under the box. I was like, well, I was like, I, I, you know, I was like, I just, she told me not to worry about it. So I hope you didn't take offense to it or anything like that. You know, she's worked with you in the past. So I kind of leaned on her as far as how I was going to handle this because I've never done this before. And he just kind of laughed and that was it. It was done. It was over. And like, that was it. Was this so over again, the phone sorry. or text message? No, it was, it was email. It was all email. Because again, like I've only, I only met him in person like two, three times, time. Okay, you know, okay. over the course yeah. of five years, over yeah. the course of five years. So it really wasn't that like one-on-one -on -one kind of the thing, but I, sh I mean, my gut was right. I should have reached out to him and been like, just so you know, I'm changing over to so-and-so, you know, and, and, you know, I, just I think like not communicating is more hurtful than yeah. just saying I'm leaving. Like, even yeah. if it's just blunt and to the point, like, thank Absolutely. you. This is my last month. Like at least communicate versus ghosting. Yeah. There's nothing worse as a coach 
And I've had several of these, especially this year, where like you take them through the prep, everything is fine. Like I'm on them, like communication's good. And then after the show, they're just gone. Yeah. They, you know, they don't check in, they don't follow yeah. their reverse, they don't say thank you. They you just get an email from Fitbody and you're like, what happened? Because yeah. you, what we happened? care. Yeah. Like 100%. we give a shit. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like, did I do Absolutely. something? Like, and you're just reeling over it versus the yeah. person just saying, 100%. Hey, thanks. You you gave me what I needed. I'm done. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and and then we don't hurt as yep. much, you know, because if if you're truly a coach that cares even a little bit like this guy did he noticed yeah. you know he's like We're well, happened. and what she said to me she was like well you're not paying him anymore right I said no I said because I was on a month to month thing and again it was just it was just like yeah. it, it was just automatically drafted from my PayPal and it was done you know and, and I wasn't on a contract or anything like that you know so she's like no you don't owe him anything she's like just she's like you just work, work, start with me I was like okay <laughs> You know, and I just listened to Bad her. advice. <laughs> it's I really interesting, it. though, because I yeah. have a lot of clients that will ask my opinion on that. Like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the coach, and I always say, like, you have you have to communicate. I know it's awkward, yes. but you know, it, it's. I think also too, we we get so anxious about it more than it actually is. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I will say that, especially on the receiving end. Like, yeah. honestly, a, an athlete that reaches out to me and they're canceling, most of the time, I have a feeling it's coming. Most of the yeah. time, it doesn't just you know, come out of nowhere. Out you know of what I mean? Right. And, and that it's cool. Like, I would totally rather us have that conversation, continue to follow each other on social media. I'm still going to cheer for you. I'm still going to yes. support you. But what where I get a little uh, is if you just leave and yeah. don't communicate with me at all, well, you know? Yep. Yep. So that was, um, and at the end of the day, that coach that I switched to she ended up being she was actually a really good coach but again bad advice on things I caught her I caught her talking shit about me and stuff so that's why I ended up leaving oh, that's her. this one yeah that's why I ended up leaving her so you know probably kind of seems like there was some foreshadowing there <laughs> but hindsight hindsight 2020 oh, that's a character issue right there that's a character problem okay got it yeah. <laughs> all right you know communication's <laughs> always best always yeah. Cause I can remember that like it was yesterday. Cause I'm sitting there with the email. I'm like on my phone and we're at, the, at a restaurant, me and my husband, Dan, and we're like, and I'm like, this is what she's telling me to do. I'm like, she's telling me to just, like, just to not even worry about it. And he's like, I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree with that. I was like, yeah, I you felt I agree with that either. Yeah, I felt weird. I felt like this was not the right thing to do. She was like, she's like, no, you're not on a contract. You're not paying him. You don't, you don't need to tell him anything. Just start working with me. And I was like, okay. I was yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah. It was, the wrong, it was the wrong choice. It was the wrong yeah. choice. <laughs> so, and there you go. There's two completely different examples of how we've bro- both broken up yeah. with a coach. Neither outcome was favorable, right? Right. But we right. did what we thought in the moment That's right. was, was the best move, you know? So, yep. again, you cannot change their reaction, but you can you can be very, very particular in what you say and how you say it. And just remember, like, I want you to think if you're writing this letter to your coach that you're going to see them next weekend at the bodybuilding show and how you would want that interaction to be and how you're going to feel walking away from that. So, you know, when I wrote that letter to my coach, I remember it was like a week. I sent it to multiple resources. I drew and I like (laughs) changed it and it still had the same outcome that I knew. It still had the same outcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it was, it was a beautiful letter. It was very well written. It was so nice, but I couldn't, yep. I couldn't change their reaction, yeah. you know? So, oh, and at the end of the day, if you're a great athlete and you're leaving them, they're probably going to be sore gonna about be hurt. it. Yeah. Gonna be hurt. And, and yep. that's, that's, that's good for you, right? That means you that's meant right. something to them at the end of the day. Like if they are getting emotional about it, it means that they did care about you and that's it right. meant something to them. Like you said, I mean, if they don't care, then they're like, oh, then they, they're not, they probably didn't have any time or effort invested in you in the first place. Right. You know? But you're right. It's like, I, it's the same thing with me. I'm like, I sit there, I'm like, well, what the hell? Like, couldn't you just talk to me? Like, yeah, just, yeah. just say something. I'm like, am I really that, yeah. that much of a bitch or am I that yeah. scary? Or are you that, you know, whatever. I'm like, that's what goes through my head. I'm like, why can't you just come talk to me? I'm like, it's okay. Yeah. Like we can come to a, a decision where like everybody's happy, you know, but just come talk to me. It's, I'm not, I'm not that scary. I promise. <laughs> I also try to remember though, that our generation cannot pick up the phone and order a pizza. They have to do everything True. online or through tech. So, True. and I'm, old school. Like I, if there's, if there is a communication that needs to be done, I pick up the phone and I talk to someone and I'm comfortable that way because that's how I was brought up. But a lot of people aren't, you know, that they cannot send it through a text message. They're not comfortable doing it. So I also try to remember that too. Like we're just in the day and age where people don't like conflict and 
they avoid or they're anonymous and they're keyboy keyboard warriors but in this yep. situation it's just not appropriate this is a business relationship and you you it's you have to treat it as such yes and at the end of the day you know like you said i mean it's a business relationship so there may be some feelings that are hurt but we'll get over it you know everybody everybody who's actually a professional gets over it yes you know and we move yep. on because there's going to be another client there's going to be another coach you know it's going to it's 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 going to be okay and it's yep. not the end of the world it's at the end of the day it's a bikini show you know what i mean like it's not life or death here yep. right so and also remember being- all the doors it's going to open you know, yes. like if I didn't leave that coach, I would have never found Jamie. I would have never found right. my body fusion. Same thing with you. Like closing right. a door is hard and, you know, there's a lot of emotion attached to that, but it's also going to open up something so much better, you yep. know? So just focus on that and focus on what's coming around. Yep. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and like you said, if you're doing it for the right reasons, that's where you're going to be. Everybody's going to be happier at the end too. Because like you said, I, I don't think there's probably ever been a situation where an athlete has left the coach and the coach was completely blindsided. You know what I mean? I like, I think we've probably felt it in our gut somewhere along the line, like something's going on, something's up, something's off, whatever it is. I know I, I very much have a sixth, sixth sense. So I'm like, I know when shit's about to go down, <laughs> like I know it. So yeah. you might as well come talk to me about it anyway. I think we're like that with every, every kind of relationship. You know, I know when, when something's off with my husband, you know, I, I'm like, yeah, just talk to me. I know something's up. Just, just tell me what's going on. Like, you know, and nothing. No, yeah. So the biggest thing with Dan, so Dan has like some some health issues, like he's got uh, lupus, he's got small small fiber neuropathy. So I always know when he's having a flare up because he'll be he'll be dick, a dick towards me, and I'm like, can you just tell me what's going on? Because I know something's up. I'm like, I know your I know your temper's short for a reason. Can you just tell me? And then then like then like a day later, he'll tell me he had a flare up. I'm like, I know. Isn't it funny? Like if he just gives you the excuse of why he's being a dick, then it's yeah. like. Cool. No problem. Yeah, I knew that now I understand on. it's, I didn't do anything, but just That's right. tell me that. That's right. I'm like, something's, <laughs> something's up. Just, just yeah. say something. Just say right? what's going on. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Yeah. You get an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so the completely random side note, but about picking up the phone, I was thinking about this too. So Dan's whole Facebook page has been, has been completely eliminated, completely gone. So he, somebody hacked our business account, the, oh, Sean, no. the, account, the, 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 the Facebook um, they put on a third party app onto our Facebook and then they were using that to siphon money out of our credit cards and our, uh, PayPal. <laughs> so they even got into your accounts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, so yeah, so we figured that out. We shut everything down and got the, got that third party app off. But in the process of doing that, they must have taken Dan's information and opened up another account and got everything shut down. Got his, Dan doesn't even have Instagram. So all of a sudden he had a notification that his Instagram account has been shut down. He's like, I don't even have an Instagram account. So the Instagram account was shut down. His Facebook is completely gone, like wiped out, gone. Just he doesn't even exist anymore. And there's On nobody- his own doing or they did it? No, they did it. The, like the Facebook did it. Facebook took it down. Which whoever, means you also lost your business account then, right? Because it's got to be connected. Right. So, so long story, but his, the Facebook, the Sean Torquitos Facebook page, business page was linked to his personal account, not mine. We've been like literally been spent the last two years trying to get me linked to it. We've had to send them um, documents showing that I am who I am that I own the business, all that kind of stuff. And still I'm not linked to it, but it's not like it takes it. forever. I so, remember doing that yeah. with Drew's old racing page. It t- they take yeah, forever. That, that and the Instagram page. So the Instagram page never got linked either. So the Instagram page is completely fine because that's under my credentials. So it's not under dance. So the, the, the silver lining there, like I said, is we still have access to the, to the Instagram page. But in the oh, process of them getting all of his information, I don't know what they did, but they they did stuff that was against Facebook community rules or whatever. And that's what got Dan's whole thing shut down completely. Shut down. Like his profile is gone. Pictures are gone. All of his connections with everybody they have from high school and all that kind of stuff, gone. Just completely gone. And I'm just like, and we have no phone phone number to pick up and call. So no. he went in, no, he went into Google and he's like Googling who, like Facebook support and stuff like that. He calls up this number and they're like asking for his social security number, his like all the stuff like this is a scam. Like, yeah. why do you need that? You don't know. You don't need that information in order to get my Facebook page. No, you can't back. get anybody on the phone no. in Facebook. It's like, you are, no. you are a multi-billion dollar company. You don't have a customer support line. Like, Nothing. Not a thing. 
not a fucking thing. That's very frustrating. And it's just crazy. And like, if you like, just in the, because he looked it up yesterday, there, in the DC area alone, there's like 60 some odd reviews, people that are just completely shit out of luck that can't, can't get access to any of their stuff anymore. So Dan's like, I'm going to figure this out. He's like, I'm going to get, do a small, a, a, a small claims class action suit or whatever. He's like, I'm going to figure something out. He's you like, should do that. Gonna... But I know there's also people you can hire that are like professionals with like the hacking and like getting things back. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, he's, and he's looked at that. He's like, I'm not paying somebody to freaking get my, my account back. That's what he said. So he's like, which I agree with. The thing is with Dan is like, he doesn't use social media other than to run my business. That's all he right. uses at heart. But I mean, and it connect, your Facebook is, yeah. I know, but your Facebook for your Sean's couture is really important for you guys. Well, you know, one thing again, that's, that's again, a silver lining is that I'm rebranding everything. True. So I was like, so I just, when this happened, I started a stage ready by Sean account on Facebook and linked that to my my account to my instagram so now everything is linked so put a little uh, barcode on so, here so people can follow the new one. <laughs> oh yeah i've got my i'll put it in the description box let me put okay. my well this is the ig page so i think everybody's got that already this is a stage ready by sean ig and then that'll link that links to our facebook as well Perfect. now already so at least we've got that going like again we're, we're we're in the process people don't realize it's a process to change over all your urls all of your because we've got so much juju from google we can't just take everything from sean Couture cuties and put it on the stage right by sean it doesn't work like that not with your so analytics no, no no so we've been going little by little branding like moving the branding over pain in the butt so you know and and, and so dan's like well fuck it i don't he's like at least i don't have wasted time scrolling reels on facebook <laughs> It's like, like well, thanks for giving that. me something to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, there's that. So it's like, but the the thing that sucks about the whole thing too is that we're going into launching Cutie's Cock on the Stage tickets right. again. The tickets, I know. So I know. we're literally launching those again on Monday. Um, which, by the way, if you guys haven't done that yet, we'll put the link description in the in the, in the bottom to go click on the webinar. We're doing a, a webinar on, on Monday, so you can get all the the ins and outs of Cutie's Cock on the Stage. But again, another silver lining on that is we are actually creating an app this year, an event app for Cuties Conquer on the Stage that will have all the information on that. It'll have it's just it's just we have to actually build it cool. out for our for our event. So we haven't done that part yet. So we just have to do that. So One more thing. Facebook, so. Right. Right. But anyway, that was a tangent, but I wanted Deep to mention breaths. that. <laughs> I know I wanted to mention that because the whole communication thing, because it's been it's been a week. That's why I was saying like at the beginning of this program of this call, it's uh, been a week. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've gotten nothing done in the last like three days because of this. Yeah, you want your hands are tied. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay, so we have to just have to act we have to expedite everything that we plan to do. <laughs> it's just happening a whole lot faster than we yeah. have it having to have it done. So anyway. <laughs> well, God's be. <laughs> I know, I'm like, well, there's that. So thinking about you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you'll be back to Cutie's Cock on the stage again this year, too. So that's yes, great. I will. It'll be fun. So be it'll be good, it'll be good times. Our ten, our, yeah, I know. Our 10-year anniversary, your, your third year. So that's yeah, going to be a lot of fun. Cannot I'm wait. Excited. One of my I'm favorite excited. events. Yes. And we're going to – I mean, it's going to be big this year. We've already got just as many people signed up already that we had last year. So um, we haven't even gone into the full, like, full-blown like full ticket launch yet. So Let's do it. If you're watching, it's the most awesome event. It kicks off the year like – perfectly so it sure does it sure does yeah. and I, again i can't i don't want to go into all the details so i'm, I'm gonna start sp spilling details like i'm like oh i can't i can't talk about Dan's that yet. gonna kill you yeah no, <laughs> i can't allowed. talk about that yet so get on the webinar on monday them, it's got to be here first <laughs> yes 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 so we got get on the webinar on monday and we'll talk about more stuff like this um um what else is there anything else that you wanted to leave off with um as far as the coaching relationship aspect of it and how to move to a new coach or you know that kind of thing no, I mean, I would just say if you're questioning, like if you're like thinking, hmm, am I coachable right now? Ask your coach. It's a very yeah. simple question. Do you think yeah. I'm coachable? And if not, where can I be better? I love when sometimes like every, there's this one athlete, like every four weeks, she'll just like touch base with me. Am I being coachable? Is there anything more you need from me? And most of the yeah. time it's no, because she's asking those questions because yeah. she's already on top of it. But if you're, you know, questioning it all, just ask your coach, you know, that should be a very easy conversation. And if you're coming with from a place of a growth mindset and wanting to learn where you can get better, like I said, nothing that we ever see to you guys is a personal attack. It's just yeah. for us to give you feedback on how to be a better athlete. Yep. Um, 
So I ask Jamie that too all the time. Like, I'm like, are my check-ins good enough? Am I giving you what you need? Is there anything more you need from me? And sometimes she'll give me feedback and sometimes Mm -hmm. like, nope, we're good. And it just allows me to know that I'm giving her enough as well. Yeah. This is a great uh, segue there too, because Hannah actually posted this in a reel yesterday. She was talking about how like clients are afraid to disappoint her as a coach She's like, I've never been disappointed as a coach ever. She's like, I'm, you know, being vulnerable and, and, you know, messing up. That's what we do, you know. But what I, what does bother me is when you don't communicate with me and tell yeah. me, you know, when, when something's going on, just tell me. We can fix it. You know, we can fix it. We can, we can work with it, you know, and, and make sure that we, that we work towards that goal versus you just not, fe- not feeling comfortable telling me because you think you're going to disappoint me. No, I don't, I don't you're, you can't disappoint me. Right. You're not going to disappoint Every check-in me. is not meant to be perfect. No. On, on your bad weeks are the weeks you need to check in the most. That's right. The one, the weeks you're struggling and you don't want to check in, those are the times you need to touch base with your coach the most. And a, a coach is not supposed to shame you, you know, if right. you're coming to them and honest and transparent. And I know there are some coaches that are that way. And maybe that's yeah. not the coach for you. Some people thrive on that. I know most yes. don't, especially as women. But if a uh, clients coming to me and they're truly struggling with something, binging, they overeat, mostly that's what it is, whatever, mm-hmm. we're going to talk through that. And I Absolutely. never shame them for that. I always start with, thank you for being honest. Yeah. Now this is a, an issue that we can work on fixing together. Right. So, that's right. and it's tough. It's tough to be vulnerable, but vulnerability is what gets you to that next level. Yep. That message that you just said right there is something that I say to at least one of my clients every single week, where it's like, thank you for telling me what was going on. Now we can work towards this. You know, we can see when something's off. Like when you check in, we can tell. We can sometimes tell just in how you're responding on the questions because you're short, you're brief. You know, I know. I'm like, if the communication is different that week, something's going on. Yeah. Something, something's happening with you. And I know yeah. that something's happening with you. So yeah. let's, let's, let's figure you're out. You don't have to be a martyr. You, we know yeah. you're strong. We know you're yeah. tough, but you're also human. Like yes. you're going to have weeks and let us coach you. That's, That's right. our job. Our job is to hear these things and the things you're struggling with. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like I said, I know a lot of coaches, they, they do shame and they mm-hmm. can be mean. And, and that's something that maybe you need to look at if that approach is for you. But most of the time, a coach wants to hear the things that you're struggling with so that we yep. can help coach you through them. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you're right. Some people like to be, you know, hardballed, you know, yes. I, and I do. I have cl- some clients that love being like. Me too. They're like, don't tell me good job. I want to hear everything I'm doing wrong. I'm like, yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I've got more of what I'm doing right. Like, okay. Like, and I can adapt. Like, that's right. Chameleon. You got a chameleon. That's right. That's right. No, say I agree. I'm like, there's that's where the communication comes into play. It's like, tell me if you want it harder, I can give it to you harder. You know, if you if you need a little bit softer, tell me. I I can can give it to you softer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just talk to me. It's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out the right piece. And like I said, I mean, once we get into a groove, once we figure this out, like I can, I can gauge it. I can tell exactly. what, when you need more, when you, when you need less, but just, you know, just again, communicate that with me, yep. you know, so yep. that will do it for today. We went on some, a few little tangents today, but that, that's okay. I think we got some, got some good informa- information out there. Yes. <laughs> Botox, vasectomies, how to break right. up with a coach, you know, all Please the believe. things behind the beginning. Facebook, Facebook, yeah, Facebook, fuck up. Facebook hacking. <laughs> What the hell? We definitely we definitely covered the gamut today. So put that um, all so guys, the subject <laughs> box. I know we did it. We did it. Um, so with that, you guys, uh, thank you so much for coming along with us. We are on season two, which is year two of Behind the Bikini, episode fifty-two. And like, comment, subscribe, hit all the buttons wherever they are, and we will see you. Next time.